you ever looked at your military alliance tab and thought, I just don't know what unit to get? Yeah, this unit looks good, but with my skill trees, technologies, faction abilities, my units are just better. So, why would you get other units from another faction? Because they're cool, I guess, but they won't be as effective. So, this video aims to look at all the units that you can add to your army that give something extra to your faction that just won't be available anywhere else. Opening with Cathay, we have the Wuxing War Compass. Now, looking at its stats, it's kind of average. It's got decent armor. It's got low speed or middling melee attack, melee defense. However, the two reasons you're getting this for are for its bound spells and for its passive ability. Now, its bound spells are the Celestial Lightning and the Celestial Comet. Two very hard hitting spells from the lore of high magic. Which means if you don't normally have access to these spells, then adding this to your army will give them to you. And they're very strong on the battlefield. And its passive abilities, those are the Nexus of Elemental Winds and Mastery of Elemental Winds. So this is a very good magic buffing unit. The Nexus provides extra power recharge rate, meaning you can cast more spells. And the Mastery of Elemental Winds gives you extra power power damage and just overall effects in general if you have a healing spell you'll heal for more if you have a damage spell you'll deal more damage if you have a buff spell it buffs you more so that's the reason you might want to get the wujing war compass in your army moving on to corn we have the blood shrine of corn now this unit is already pretty incredible it has a pretty good melee attack with a bonus versus infantry his melee defense isn't great However, its incredible attack animations just sends enemy units flying all over the place, meaning that this unit doesn't actually take as much damage as you would expect it to. However, we're looking specifically at what buffs these units will provide to your army, and this Blood Shrine does not disappoint. This Blood Shrine has the Totem of Endless Bloodletting, which gives it a melee attack and a leadership buff to everything within 35 meters of the unit. Needless to say, this is a very good unit to shove into any melee-based army because that melee attack boost and leadership boost just helps in general. It also has Encourage, which means that if your Lord isn't nearby, this unit is just providing that little bit extra leadership on top of that. After that brief description, that's why you might want to add the Blood Shrine of Corn to your army. Coming from the realms of Zinch, we have the Exalted Pink Horrors of Zinch. Now, with this unit's base stats, it's already pretty incredible. It has a good amount of speed, good melee attack and melee defense, and a great missile attack. However, again, we're looking at these units mainly for their passive abilities, and this one doesn't disappoint, as once again, we have an ability called Arcane Mirth that increases your power recharge weight. So, while this isn't as good as the Wujing Compass, this ability does require you to be outside of melee, you don't really want the Exalted Pink Horror in melee anyway. You want to use up as much of those missiles as you can with this unit. So, this unit is a great support unit, mainly because it does so much damage and gives you something extra on top of it. And that's the reason you might want to add the Exalted Pink Horror to your army. Moving away from the Game 3 races for our last unit here, we are going to look at the Empire. And that unit will be the Luminarch of Hish. Now, for anyone who has played the previous games, you'll be well aware of what this thing is capable of. However, for anyone new to the series that Game 3, let's have a quick look at its stats. The first thing you might notice is the gargantuan missile strength this unit has combined with its long range. This is basically a giant death laser. Any large unit caught by this beam is going to take an absolute ton of damage. And honestly, this is the main reason most people will take this unit. However, Again, we're looking specifically at the passive abilities, and this one has two pretty great ones. Let's get the basic one out of the way first. Again, we have a power recharge ability. However, this isn't for your army. This is for the enemy army. It reduces their power recharge rate. While kind of minor, it can help with reducing all those spell spams that the AI may use against you. But moving on to the very good passive ability of this unit, it gives 10% damage resistance to every unit within 35 meters of it. 
It does have a caveat that you need more than 15 wins of magic. However, that's not too hard to get. So while this unit deals an incredible punch in battle, you can sort of put it amongst some of your more important units just to give them that little bit extra damage resistance. But also, if it happens to run out of ammo while you're using it, you can use it to reinforce your front lines. Just don't let it get into melee combat itself. You can see that the rest of its melee stats and defenses aren't that great. That's the last unit for this video. In our next video, we'll be looking specifically at units that will debuff the enemy army. These will be units with special abilities that debuff enemy leadership, enemy melee attack, any stats at all that will just hinder the enemy and really help you out. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you would like to see future videos, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.